Hey there, Eric here from Socially Awkward Studios, and this 4-Eyed Radio presentation is being proudly brought to you by Raven Designs, illustration and design that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, visit ravencruise.com. Please podcast. What you're about to hear is kind of Shark Tank meets American Idol meets The Voice meets Last Comic Standing. Basically every NBC show you've ever seen plus a Fox show. We have three judges here and they're all comics and we have three comics coming. The three judges are going to be judging the comics on an entrepreneurial idea that they've had Maybe they were intoxicated a little bit. Maybe they were tired. Whatever it is, it's going to be a crazy idea. And our three judges are going to be telling them, you know, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. And all of our three judges have a very limited entrepreneurial knowledge themselves. So, yeah, let's get started and introduce the judges. First, we have Kevin Elliott. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Super excited to be here and get this show on the road. (laughs) (laughs) kevin is an awesome comic very funny he kind of looks like the guy from despicable me i'm just gonna try and uh, he does look exactly like him i'm a real life Uh, i'm gonna try and just uh explain to you what we're all seeing here since this is a podcast like Um, hip-hop groove (laughs) so you know that's what he's like he's he's awesome though we have joe gangemi I feel like Jesse in that very special episode of Saved by the Bell because I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so scared, Kevin. I'm so scared. Oh, and heads up, uh, Joe looks like Brother Bear from Berenstein Bears. He does look like Brother Bear from Berenstein Bears. and um, He hates that. I am Sister Bear because we found out we share the same birthday, just to throw that in. And twins. <laughs> We're birthday twins. And Joe is the most recent champion of Snap Battles, which is a huge thing in Phoenix comedy. So like we're very happy to have him really here. <laughs> it makes me feel good, though. He got a belt on everything, guys. It doesn't fit, but it's good. Um, and our last judge is Christopher Centani. And he is amazing. Every single thing that ever comes out of his mouth is hilarious. He is watching a Blackhawks game right now and not paying attention to anything that I'm saying. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> oh, I'm here. I'm paying attention. It's going to be good. And our three contestants tonight coming up with their ideas, their pitches. We have Alex Coyne. That's my pick. Oh, shit. What's up, my pitch? guy. Dom Dada and Aaron Kyle Miles. What's up, guys? Yo. <laughs> pitches, you ready? Pitches in the house. <laughs> Where are my pitches at? And Let's hey, go. guys, just a heads up. In the bullpen, if you need help closing, who do we got back there? We have Mr. Mike Kennedy. If anybody... (laughs) Oh, sorry. Mike Moses Kennedy. Um, Let me just describe this man to you guys. Uh, He's sitting slumped over on a stool. He's, uh, He's got long hair, looks like Jesus, wearing sunglasses inside. Yeah, he's a very special man. He comes up with a lot of ideas, apparently. So if any of our contestants need help tonight, he's going to be able to be kind of their lifeline and come in and uh, help them out. He's the closer. He's the closer, definitely. So you guys want to get started? Let's get the show on the road. I'm excited. Yes, I'm very excited. What do you guys have? I'm so interested. Okay, you guys. Our first contestant tonight... Mr. Alex Coyne. Give it up for Alex, everybody. Woo! What's up, guys? Can I sit on the store or do I have to sit on the edge of the stage? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, well, you know, I'll sit next to you. I don't want to make you feel bad. He seems oh. indecisive. I'm out. <laughs> hey, hey, 
Got to start better. Good, Matt, I don't want on. you on. I was gonna. I wasn't gonna <laughs> accept anyways. Uh, guys, it's listen. It's good to be in the taffy room. It is. Uh, and speaking of taffy, I, I grew up. I grew up in the in the woods of Appalachia. I grew up in Pennsylvania, eating a lot of taffy. You know what I'm saying? And that, my friends. And plus, well, listen. Conventional flossing is as boring as an as a dumpster full of ham. You know? Who wants to floss conventionally? That is why I'm missing a tooth. Right up here, 21 years old, missing a chomper, got a mouthful of cavities, or as Mitch Hedberg would call them, little places to store stuff. <laughs> do, you, do you need a place to put a pee? No, I don't know. I love Mitch Hedberg. So, so I was uh, I was stoned the other day, and I can I say that on here? Well, I get raided by the FBI, and I came up with a with a. A good, I think, a breakthrough in the in the dental industry, in the dental hygiene industry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I like I like to call. I think I'm about to call it floss U. That's spelled with a U, like the University of Miami. You know what I'm saying? It's like like a U at the end. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, it's no, it's not. It's not made out of uh, gold. It's, it, it's not laced with cocaine. It's not that much affiliated with you, although we are get working on getting Kimbo Slice's strength and conditioning coach as our sponsor athlete. The Miami references are going deep. Uh, <laughs> what floss you is, guys, <laughs> what, what floss you is, is uh, it's shaped like a mouthpiece, and there's little strings of dental floss that your, dental, that your dentist adjusts to your mouth, and you just bite down on that sucker and grind around. That's, this thing will take it. Quick, easy, timeless. This thing will take you from an Uncle Creepy corn nut mouth to, to having a face full of piano keys. You know, you just have straight ivories going across your grill. You know what I'm saying? This, like, if Kimbo's, Kimbo's slice of strength and conditioning coach is getting, getting on board, you know it's legit. Like, I've had to put in a Skype or two. Like, we're, we're not fucking around anymore. You know, I got, I got this idea, so I figured I'd come down to the podcast. Uh, you know, and, and let somebody on the internet with a work ethic make money and profit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, there we go, guys. Wow. That was a great pitch. <laughs> we have a 21-year-old here missing a tooth telling us all how we should floss. So, that's great. How, how, did, you, uh, how did you feel that went, Alex? Well, first of all, how long did I do? I hope I didn't go too short. As long as I did a decent amount of time, what else? I, mean, uh, I didn't get the as light. Long, I mean, I mean, He's I, such a comic. I saw, he cares about running the light. Yeah. I, saw, I mean, I saw people giggling. I think I had a solid idea. Am I a professional? Did I go to Horton Business School? No, I didn't. I grew up in Pennsylvania, but no Horton Business School. Are you sure that they were giggling because it was funny, or were they giggling because it was ridiculous? What do you think? <laughs> what oh. What do you think? Like, uh, <laughs> I think maybe maybe a little both maybe maybe a little both. I I think those Miami references were were a little deep for everybody, but that's okay. I think it's a good idea. Is it, are you talking like a mouth guard that you put in your mouth, kind of like a a mouthpiece, and that is what flosses your teeth? I just don't think I understand completely. Yeah, I probably I was probably too focused on being silly to. Uh, explain the idea fully. It's what it is. I, what in my head, I didn't really draw it out with a pencil yet. Uh, it's it's kind of like a white two pieces of white plastic overlapping each other with floss going up here and then floss coming across horizontally to match up with all your teeth. And then you bite on it, you bite into it. And there's two layers of floss, and then you just if, like if you've ever been on Molly, this thing would be dope for you. Like you'd have the cleanest fucking teeth. Like your your gums would be eliminated, but you'd have some. You'd have you no more crud, no more sea monkeys in your teeth. You know what I'm saying? No more krill. Okay. Well, let's uh, go to our judges and see if you have a chance of winning a Kickstarter at the end of the month this month. Uh, let's go to Kevin Elliott first. What did you think, Kevin? All right. Now this guy's my pick for this week, Alex Coin. <laughs> First of all, if it's like being on Molly, are you are you gonna lace it with Molly? If you lace the mouthpiece with Molly, well, that, that's definitely get... an option. That's you have to do that at home, but we we'll give you the instruction. <laughs> like a box of macaroni, we're not gonna give you the butter to put in your macaroni, but like we'll put the instructions on how much, like dosing recommendations. I'm yeah. not gonna lie, you, dude. I love this business idea, dude. I fuck, I do. I love it because I, in my head, I'm like, I don't floss ever. And if I boring as fuck to put in, I'll do that. I'll watch a rerun of Friends and I'll just chill for half an hour, dude. I love it, man. You, you I thought you did great. I hope you win the whole goddamn thing because you're my pick. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I forgot to say earlier that each of these contestants is one of the judges' picks. So this could also be very embarrassing for our judges tonight, depending on how the contestants do. So let's go now to Joe Gangemi and see what he thought. Uh, I have a couple quick questions. One, you said you're from Pennsylvania? Uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh, yes. yes Pittsburgh. Sir. Why the Miami stuff? Why would you be a U- University of Miami fan? I'm not. I was just... It, <laughs> you I, have, like, so many University of Miami references. I actually left one out. I was going to say, if you're Cuban, you can call it a flash Jew. Just to, you know, just to have an <laughs> extra excuse to say Jew, you know? I don't know. Jew flash Jew if you're Cuban. And flash I'm Jew, Jewish, baby. <laughs> what are you doing? Offensive. That's what... No, it's not offensive. <laughs> no, that's how they say it. That's how they say you, you and, and cute. Come on, Kevin. You know we're boys. I've hugged you many times. That's why I'm, I hate Colombians so much. Hey, Jew. <laughs> hey, I'm not a fucking hey, Jew. What you doing? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. The, the, the main thing I have a problem with about this whole uh, invention is everybody's teeth are spaced differently. So the idea of a mouth guard with floss in it sounds Hold great. On. Let me interrupt before I ask you, Sue. Mouthpieces, when you buy them, aren't just fit for one mouth. You have to put them in that hot water, boiling water, and then it fits in your right, teeth. Right, but they're also not... Alex is shaking his head. I have, a, like, no, I have, an, ob- an, I have an objection. I, uh, maybe wait, I'll okay. this Our bullpen... But I have, I have something some. to... Uh, can I... Uh, let me address this one yeah, real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe I forgot to mention this, but you go. You actually have to get this special made at your dentist, like a, like a custom-made mouth guard for fighters. He okay. did mention this. Right. I was going to butt in and say this. So, judges, you need to pay better attention. He said it would be specially fit by your especially, dentist. Especially, especially, yeah. especially fit clo- by dentist. Sounds expensive. I'm out. I'm sorry. Let's go to the closer real quick. What's our Closer got to say. Yeah, I got to say this hillbilly's tail on orthodontry is a beauty. I love it. <laughs> Why don't we uh, talk about motorizing it? I say we hook it up to a USB cable. This could be like the, those electronic ab machines. Just have a cord coming out of your mouth with the mouth guard yeah. and get it plugged right into your laptop. <laughs> Motorize it. You don't even have to move. Throw on some Netflix. You're good to go with this kid's product. I love it. Vibrates the I love this kid. I, he's a, he's a, he's a uh, uh, Bill Gates of Appalachia. <laughs> I went to high school next to Mark Cuban's high school, by the way. So if you guys <laughs> shut me down, I'll <laughs> put in a call. Like three That's away. a park like alumni. He went to Mount away. Lebo. Look it up. One of so us did Kurt is Angle. bound to become a billionaire. I'll put in a call. High school next to Mark Cuban. I okay, let's go to our last judge, Chris Centeni. How did you feel about this pitch? And how are the Blackhawks doing? <laughs> yes, also that. <laughs> All right, here's the thing. It's two to one. We're at the end of the second period. <laughs> but what I was really doing was I, was, I looked up Kimbo Slice. <laughs> and uh, his teeth suck shit. Well, no, so I don't, sh- think that, I don't think his trainer is the guy that you want. Like this guy trained Kimbo Slice to have the worst teeth in the world <laughs> that this flosser wouldn't help. You know what I mean? You need, to have, you need to have somebody with really good teeth so that it looks like the flosser is, has already done his job. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're talking about a strength and condition coach. He's got a set of pearly whites on him. Again, your teeth don't have anything to do with your strength or conditioning. <laughs> you know, how, how flossed you are doesn't help win fights. Um, I don't hate you as a person. That's not what I'm saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, the, as a guy who's had a lot of dental work done, a custom mouth, anything, is like two, three grand right off the bat. How would you how would you make it affordable for people? Uh, uh, cheap Chinese labor and, and uh, good American sales tactics. That's no. real. That's real disgusting. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Every, no, I'm just fucking around with that. I mean, I don't know. I haven't thought that far ahead into the labor cost, that's, but uh, but I I don't think it would be that. Like, it's not going to be made out of titanium. It's mostly gonna, it's going to be made out of plastic. There's going to be like you're going to get a pack of them, like a like a set a whole, of fifty. Okay. Like a set of fifty disposable. Wash them out. Put them in the dishwasher. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Alex. Alex Coyne. We'll see how you did later on. Great. Thanks. <laughs> okay, let's move to our next contestant. This is uh, Joe Gangemi's pick for the week. We have Dom Dada. Dom got him. <laughs> very nice to be here. <laughs> I feel very safe. Surrounded by white people in Scottsdale. Oh, they don't know I'm black, do they? No. <laughs> oh, okay. No. I'm black. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of information about myself, besides me being black. I'm from Denver, which is another reason why I'm familiar with being around white people. Okay. 
And uh, to basically go into my spiel here about what I think is a great idea, it's because I was able to actually safely get up to Scottsdale today. As my friends know, my car was impounded months ago. I was pulled over by the uh, Scottsdale police. Okay, And as you know, it's 2015. A lot of things are going on in the world. Now, my idea here involves the vehicle. The uh, idea I have here is basically, if anybody's ever been pulled over and received a DUI, I have an idea as far as a camera system for your car. Basically, what it is is when you get pulled over by the police, and this is for more of an innocent person because cops have to have stats just like anybody else to pull you over. They need to give you tickets or they're looking for a reason to pull you over to uh, basically put somebody in jail or hurt somebody as we know what's going on more recently. And uh, my idea basically is a camera system that actually has audio also that goes on your window. So when you get pulled over and the cop comes up to your window, he knocks on the window, you have a thing that you put over your window And you roll your window all the way up. So, one, if you have been drinking, they can't smell what's going on in your car. If you've been smoking, they can't smell what's going on in your car. And basically, you know, if you don't have a tinted window, they can see you in the car. Therefore, you don't have to roll down the window. So the camera records them, and the camera on the other side records you. And it also has, like I said, uh, a speaker on there where they can hear you. And there's also a little, um, shall we say, a place for an envelope where you can keep your ID, your registration, and your insurance. Therefore, this can save you from three different things. You know, basically, it can save you on time. It can save you on money. might even save your life if you're black. Um, So with this idea, basically, I want to make it so that when a cop comes up to your car, they knock on your window, and they tell you to roll down the window. Like, uh, just want to let you know, this is when you take advantage of the situation. Officer, I can hear you clearly. Uh, I have a – my license is good. My registration is good. My insurance is good. You had no reason to pull me over. As a matter of fact, you're being recorded, and the system actually records, and every 25 megs, it's connected to your smartphone, so it sends a video and audio to an email of your choice. And I would say my mama's email. I would send it to her because if something happens, I want her to have the evidence if these dudes break into my car and trying to hurt me. Anyways, so it connects to your smartphone, and you let the cop know, hey, anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. All right, so therefore, in this sense, the cop is not able to necessarily force you to roll down the window or ask you questions that would put you in a situation where you would actually be convicting yourself of doing something wrong. So when the cop says, you know, do you know why I pulled you over? You can actually say, why did you pull me over? I have all these things right. Why did you pull me over? Oh, for speeding? Well, I hope you have your radar that can actually calibrate to say I was officially speeding because I have you on tape and I have you recorded saying I was doing this. And if you're going to give me a ticket, go ahead and give me the ticket so I can move on with my day. You got all the information right here. Okay? If that doesn't work out, they break into your car. Another thing with my idea is uh, have a clear baggie of sugar under your seat so that if they are breaking into your car and they're trying to find a reason they can say, oh, what is this? What is this that we found? And you're handcuffed on the ground. You can tell them it's sugar. It's like, yeah, sure it is. And they stick that pinky in there and they lick it. Like, yeah, goddamn right it's sugar. I told you it was sugar. I'm about to sue the shit out of the police department. Because this is another way you can get rich, save your life, and get out of paying the ticket and move on with your day. On top of that, like I said, it gets sent to your email. You have all the evidence, anything that they were going to try to use against you. And uh, basically with this whole idea... If I was trying to market this idea, I would probably use Obamacare because most people that can't really afford certain things, this is going to work for the black community more than anything right now. But you got to be innocent. <laughs> what, what were you going to say? You got to be innocent. But you got, I mean, you, I mean, even if you're guilty, they can't force you to roll down your window. <laughs> yes. Yes, they can. They, they really can't. Do you believe they can force you to roll down the window? I don't know that this idea is completely legal, uh, but let's move on and find out what our judges thought. Um, I'm pretty sure that by law you have to roll down your window, but let's find out. Uh, Kevin Elliott, uh, what did you think? All right, first of all, Dom, thank you for coming on. It's great to finally be in the mind of a minority for me. Oh, shit. Super appreciative of that. <laughs> I always roll down the window. I'm like, hey, what's up? What's the problem? I, don't, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm white. But <laughs> You want a beer? <laughs> oh, you haven't been watching the news, have you? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm the only one that watches news on Facebook and see what's but going on. Legitimately, I don't know the technology enough to make it work. 
personally, but if you could make it work to where you never have to roll your window down ever, oh no, dude, I'm, that'd well, be the greatest thing of all time, man. Well, After white people singing next to me. Well, let me say it like this. You don't necessarily have to not roll your window down, but you want to let the cop know that I'm recording you and watching everything you do so that say you do something wrong and you're giving me a reason why I could sue the police department, this is a good chance for me to get rich and you lose your job for you pulling me over and wasting my time. <laughs> If I didn't do anything wrong. Or if I did do something wrong, go ahead and give me the ticket so I can move on. Put the ticket right here in my windshield wiper, <laughs> and I can move on with my day. Like you don't have to sign home. it. You know, if they try to tell you you have to sign the ticket, that's bullshit. Because the only reason you have to sign a ticket is if uh, you are promising that you'll go to court. Uh, our closer wants to come in and say something. Uh, Moses Kennedy. Thank you. You'll, you'll get my name right sooner or later. Um, <laughs> had to hire a woman to do sports. Anyways, um, I like everything about this idea. You'd have to get a double-sided camera, like where you could see almost like a, okay. a fake, you know, like a like cops use in inter- interview rooms, you know, the fake glass where you can see two-way mirror kind of thing. Um, the ACLU already has an app similar to this where you can film a cop, and it'll, if something happens to your phone, it automatically goes straight to the ACLU, but they don't have it in Arizona. They only have it in California and, like, Florida, but they don't have it in Arizona yet. What's great about that, it goes straight to it. And then if, if, you, if the ACLU sees that someone's recording in your area, they send that out to, like, community organizers and activists and stuff like that so they know that the police are being filmed somewhere near their house and then go out and see what the heck's going on too, which is a very cool option. But I would not ever, if you're completely okay, don't antagonize a cop the first thing you do. I would hold Thanks off. If you're advice. fucked up, I would keep the window up. <laughs> I would just say... I would film everything that's going on on my phone if I was hammered, and I would not talk to the cop at all. You don't have to talk to a cop. And just stay silent the whole time. If they want to arrest you, chances are if you get pulled over after midnight in the city of Scottsdale or, or right now, you're getting a ticket if you've had anything to drink at all. So I would just sit in your car. Let them smash your window. I don't feel like you closed that one. I feel like you yeah, left that one wide. Well, I, I, I didn't expect to. Oh, I didn't expect to win these white people over. You know what I mean? I, I really didn't expect. Joe, to win. Joe doesn't think you close when you were talking. I'm like, no, nah, I'm on board, man. I, I, I'm with you. I'm sorry. I have a question for Dom. Did you uh, research anything about the legality of of this? Yes, actually, I did a little bit of research on there. Um, as far as I did find out that. You're not. You do not have to roll down the window. Matter of fact, if you get stopped on like a one of those uh, stops where they're like it's on New Year's Eve and they're just stopping people, you don't have to roll down your window. You can literally put all your paperwork in an uh, envelope or in a, pla- a plastic baggie, throw it over the window, so that they just have your information checking. So you can just move on. They don't. They can't. They can't actually smell what's going on in your car or <laughs> you know be able to find a reason to actually get you out the car, search you illegally. Or that would be probable cause in their situation if they smell alcohol or weed. Therefore, you can move on. It looks like Joe has a question here for me. No, it's not a question. I, I feel bad. You're my guy, and so guy, I really Joe. want you to win. But I know exactly what you're talking about, where they put their shit in a Ziploc baggie and they hang it out the window, and they're like, hey, cop, my stuff's here. You can't say shit. Uh, but they totally just busted, like, four people. Because it's like a libertarian thing that was going around. But uh, librarian. No, it's uh, but yeah, they were a bunch of cops said that just having it was probable cause. I'm on board with the idea. I don't want to pull over and even talk to a cop if they pull me over. But uh, I totally get why you don't. <laughs> you know, so I get why this is your invention. I, you know, I'm uh, glad you guys understand that. I've been walking for the last four months. You don't like my idea? Well, that's I, what I was also going to say. Physically fit. That's I, what I was also going to say. My legs like, are really uh, in shape. If all your stuff's good, my license, my registration's good, you're good. I don't have to roll in the window. It's like, Dom, your fucking license and registration is a good license for real. <laughs> yeah, you know what? My license was suspended. I didn't know, officer. Like, I, I could have went to jail. But you know what? Also, Shout out to the Scottsdale police because they didn't take me to jail that night. I told some jokes. That's why. I told some jokes when I got pulled over. Also, if I'm Dom Dada, I am not hiding a baggie full of sugar under my car seat because they're going to find that and they're going to be like, yeah, this is some really sweet Coke. <laughs> and you're fucking going down. Do you imagine? What is that, Starsky and Hutch? Officer, yeah. I have a six-year-old right. son. I just keep sugar in my car. Oh, no. <laughs> I feel like this idea is more like just check on what your rights are and try to trick the cops and get them in trouble and get rich. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't know that it's, not- I don't know that it's actually an invention of any kind, but that's okay. That's exactly what it is, because I thought about getting 50 Cent to sponsor it. Get rich or die trying. You know what I'm saying? I got to see him pitch a commercial, 
And if I can find a reason, if you're going to pull me over for no reason and all my shit's together and you do something that you're not supposed to be doing, I'm suing the shit. I'm rich. But you're not going to be able to sue a cop for tasting your baggie of sugar. No, no. (laughs) That's if they break my window and pull me out of the car, drag me out. They would have done all the shit they weren't supposed to do by then. Like, you can't do that if you just pull me over for a speeding ticket. Okay, let's go to our last judge. Chris Santani, what do you think? Um, I I was looking up the the rules of the road. Of what the hockey game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I the idea apparently your idea is icing, and there needs to be a face off. <laughs> no, the, I I understand the idea, and I and I like where you're trying to go with it. It's just that if if you have the system set up and the, and you can hear them and you can do whatever, the officer can just say, "Please step out of the car," and I'm pretty sure you have to comply with that. That's part of it. So he could just bypass your whole idea by saying, please step out of the car. And then it's over. Because as soon as you get out, if, you've done it, if you haven't done anything wrong, then he'll probably just let you go on your way. And it was a lot of money you spent for nothing. But if you did something wrong, he will have the probable cause by asking you to get out. Right. And that's exactly why I said at the beginning, that's why you take control over the situation. As soon as he knocks on the window and says... You know, before he can even say, do you know why I pulled you over? Like, why did you pull me over? And they tell you, I pulled you over for uh, either a light. You're not, not going to pull me out of my car because I have a tail light out or because I was speeding. I don't need to get out of my car. If my license, you know, maybe is suspended after they check it, yeah, <laughs> then I got to get out of my car. That's when you're not innocent. You got to get your ass out the car. So this is not going to work for the person that's guilty. I'm thinking more for the people that are innocent and need to move on with their time. Instead of cops making money off of people and wasting time, hey, don't waste my time. I'm going to move on, take my information, let me go. Give me a ticket, I'll fight it in court. I love that you're looking at me the whole time you explain it. I'm the one that's on board with your idea. (laughs) Uh, My favorite part of that pitch was how uh, Mike Moses Kennedy came in and basically said, oh, there's something like this that already exists. And it did not close the pitch at all. It was like... Not the closer we expected. (laughs) No, not at all. Okay, let's move on to our last contestant. Wait, real, real quick, one more note. I hate to say it, but all these black guys that have been killed by cops, they were all on foot, man. Nobody was driving. <laughs> okay, Nobody was driving. Thing, one last thing. Oh, I had man. an idea about training a parent to know the, to know the law <laughs> and actually Yo, watch. Man. Like, hey, my parent goes on the roof, and he's watching. And then we take him to court. Like, honestly, look, parent, tell him what happened. Honestly, yeah, you're what happened. training the, a parent? Like yeah. a paralegal. Like a paralegal, that's what I was going to call it. A paralegal. <laughs> and we sell them. You know, the parrot. We well, can walk around with well, a parrot oh on my, my shoulder. God, I wish you'd done that. Yeah, I'll we'll we'll be mean, back in a couple months to do spy parrot. I need, you, what I need you to do is develop spying parrot <laughs> oh and bring that back because I can get behind spying they can parrot. Talk. Parrot legal. It's Polly incredible. wants justice. Yeah, Polly. I'm pretty sure oh. that a parrot's memory of a situation is not going to hold up in court, but like that's okay. You teach him to say uh, he's innocent. He's innocent. That's all you got to do. Innocent. Innocent. White people love animals, though. I don't know that you can white, have white like, animal animals. witnesses in court. Anyway, let's move on to our last contestant. <laughs> this is Chris Centeni's pick for the week. That's right. One of my favorite people. He has a really hot girlfriend also. Oh, Give it up for fucker. Aaron Kyle Miles, I did. I did. or AKM as we call him. You shit on everybody else other than Aaron. <laughs> I love Aaron. Sorry. Yeah, this is the, the oh, podcast God, is biased serious. already. For all the podcast listeners, he's setting up the stage properly. Yeah, this guy came with an idea. I came with an idea, not just an idea, but a change of the guard, if you will. And I'll break it down. I'm but out. first, I need to interview the closer, Mike Moses Kennedy, right? Yeah. Come here for a sec, Mike. Way to say it correctly. This is important. Mike, you are a comedian, correct? Um, I'm just a dude who does comedy. You've been on the road for comedy? I've been on the road for comedy, yeah. It's a rough life, right? It is not a life I feel like living at my age. It's rough. Kevin Elliott, Kevin Elliott I know you've experienced living uh, on the road doing some comedy. It's a rough life, right? It's an, yeah, it's an interesting life. You stay at some bullshit places, motels, sketchy areas. All I'm saying is, if you're on the road a lot, even if you're not a comedian, and you pass over the lines into Washington, Colorado, you can go to a Motel 6, or you can go to my bed and breakfast called the Wake and Bake. Now, the difference between just a bed and breakfast and a Wake and Bake is simple. It's weed. (laughs) What? It's that simple. And if you've been driving however many hours... 
and you cross the state lines and you say, you know what? The weed would be nice right now. I would love some granddaddy perp. So here's what happens. You have kids, not a problem. You drop them off at Motel 6 because they leave the light on for you. They'll leave the, they'll leave the light on for the children. Okay? You show up. You wake up in the morning. Some people in the morning, they get bowls of cereal. At the Wake and Bake, you get a bowl of granddaddy perp. Okay? That's a sativa. It gets you up. When it's time for bed, we give you a bowl of something else. It's an indica, which is, if you don't know what that is, in the couch. It puts you down like a rhino. Rhinos don't really go down, but you know what I mean. So you get that. Then, if you're not even smoking weed, you can still enjoy the place because we have a five-star restaurant. And you're probably wondering, what kind of food do you have? Whatever you want, man. <laughs> we'll pick it up from the grocery store, you know? It's that simple. And we have specialty items. You want a burger? We've got the Wake and Bacon Burger. We feed the pigs weed plants so that you get super <laughs> fucked up when you eat them. It's great. Let him finish the pitch. It's Kevin. great. You're probably wondering, like, what else is there to do at the Wake and Bake? Well, we have a sauna. It's called the Marisana. You get in there, and we just pump fucking weed smoke in. We just pump it in. We just clan bake you. It's not even a sauna. We just clan bake you for an hour. We lock you in and you get fucking baked. We lock you in. I mean, depending on restrictions of the state laws, you know, maybe we don't lock you in. But I don't think you'll complain. It's the wake and bake. It can be franchised. Even, even Colorado and Washington, you can go outside the lines. You know what I mean? Eventually you'll be able to. And if you're a comedian, I know you're on board because fuck staying at a hotel and have to worry about where you're going to smoke. Or can we smoke in the bathroom? Put a towel in the fucking thing. There's so many pros to this. I think this shit sells itself. And I rest my case. <laughs> the question I have is, is there an emergency bu button on the sauna if you want to get out <laughs> if you're locked in there? If you are too fucked up, you can hit the button. And we will uh, we'll just... Poof, We'll just blow it all out. But you're going to have to pay for the, the other people. <laughs> just get back up. Oh, my God. I thought I was done. Okay. If that's true, then I'm on board with this. Uh, let's go to our closer and see what he has to say about this. Mike Moses Kennedy. Now, this is an idea that I think we all can get behind. This is what America was built on. There's a town called Lewis, you know, Lewis and Clark. Did you read the history books? Yeah. Why am I arguing with you? It's your idea. Why don't I tell it to these young kids? <laughs> Lewis and Clarkston. Lewiston, Idaho is on the border of Washington with Clarkston, Washington. So you can legally, it's literally you walk across the bridge. I say, we don't even get a hotel. We don't need a Motel 6. We just get a kick-ass place, and it's a tiny little town. Yeah. So you got people coming all over. The, we got a little comedy club out there in the woods. Mainly have chicks out. It's a little party place. You know what I mean? You got the beard. I got the beard. It's like the Playboy Mansion, but in the middle of fucking nowhere, like the Bunny Ranch. And we just, Bunny Ranch, anybody? You ever been to the Bunny Ranch? It's in the middle of goddamn nowhere because fucking prostitution's legal there. And it's insane. They bring out a menu and everything. That's what we do to people. That's where Moses met his we do. See, did I see what I did there? I have a weed do. <laughs> what I'm saying is, it's like the whorehouses of the whatever, the old west. We get a, we get a place in Colorado. It's a co-op. <laughs> Fifty-two weeks. You, it's a timeshare. You go up there and booze it up. Is this not possible? This is so easy. Aaron had a business idea. You have a convent. You have like a cult. I have a I have a compound. I think it's a compound. Yeah, Moses I think it's a compound. A yeah, it's a compound. Exactly. I think we can find a compound in the middle of nowhere. We get them high. Game. We do what we want. It's great. We get a pool. We get a hot tub. You ever see the Source family? It could be just like the Source family. Why can't it be? Why can't it be? Vote for this idea. This is the idea. I think we're going now more to Mike Moses Kennedy's fantasies in life yeah. than a pitch. But uh, I want to go first to Chris Centeni because this was uh, your pick for the week. Let's see what he has to say. I Honestly, I like the commitment to the puns of the weed. Uh, this is my guy, so I'm all about it. Um, 
I thought you had a solid business. Appreciate it. Yeah, I thought. I don't know, man. I think it's great. I'm totally on board. The food's what sold you, right? Yeah, there's wings. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. There's wings. There, I know there's going to be food there for people who are high, so there'll be plenty. Which of is the it best food? And junk food, and I'm in. It's I'm a in. Product and compound, not a bed and breakfast. It's uh, whatever you want it to be. Did you hear that? He said it's whatever you want it to be when you're high. Yes. That's what he said. Uh, so for our future contestants, now you know if you want Chris Centeni to be on board with your idea, just have food involved. Uh, <laughs> preferably, preferably hot dogs, I think. I think that's I mean, his, don't uh, blow it up for everyone right away. Or gas station taquitos. <laughs> Either one. Yeah, food's a big deal. Okay, um, let's go to Kevin Elliott. What did you think about this pitch? All right. <laughs> I, I loved don't. It. I fucking yeah, love it, bro. Don't, no, hey, <laughs> Kevin liked it the whole down. time. I did love it. I know Listen, you don't smoke. I don't. I don't do drugs at all. I never have. Which is why you'll get a very partial opinion from me. Mm-hmm. I love it, dude. <laughs> I just do. <laughs> I would, and I don't smoke. I would still stay there just well, because we've got I beers know on draft. Take naps like me during the middle yeah, of the day, and that—that's my kind of place. We'll uh, people that drink beer. What do you <laughs> think? My, apparently, our closer is now, now in business with Aaron. Hey, let me tell Kevin, if you've been to a comedy show, you've been to the Wake and Bake, okay? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Pretty much. Shit. What, is, what are you calling it? The Wake and Bake. The Wake and Bake. That's just what That's it is. That's such a clutch name. Bake? Are you kidding me? Yeah, can you like you, you can franchise that anywhere. <laughs> oh, I'm going to the Wake and Bake. Fuck that. <laughs> you want to go to the I love, Holiday I Inn? Hey, look. I love the idea of dropping your kids off at Motel 6. <laughs> and then the adults go to, to the wake and bake. <laughs> it's so, it's so stupid, I mean, if you guys it. get behind it, maybe we'll invest in a daycare. I don't Look, know. Look, man, great idea, great pitch. <laughs> I don't smoke weed, and I still love what you said, man. Great job. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Okay, let's go to Joe Ganjemi. I know you were really excited to hear AKM's pitch, so let's hear what you had to have to say about it. I was, and God, I want to be on board. But you're not my guy, so I don't want to be on board. <laughs> be What's your heart tell you? My heart tells me, oh, my God, I can smoke like right as I get up in a hotel. That's great. But I feel like even if we don't back it, Kennedy's totally going to back it, so I'm not <laughs> super worried. Uh, I kind of like the, uh, the name Hotel Spliff. Joe, let me stop you right there. You're a comic, right? Yeah. You want to eventually want feature. You want to go on the road, right? Yeah, man. If you invest in this, I'm going to put you in for free, my friend. Boom. What do you Colorado and Washington. He's only stayed I know I'm not your guy, but I'm going to put you up in one of the suites. I'm real sorry, Dom. That sounds nice. That sounds nice. Hotel you pull, <laughs> yeah. you pull, the, contestant, Dom you, you pull the fire alarm. It doesn't shoot sprinklers. It just smokes you out. <laughs> that sounds like a health violation. It's a total, it's a total health violation. Yes. I'm not trying to sound mean, but that'll get you shut down, so I need you to take that back, right? <laughs> <laughs> or I have to pull my... If you're, and yeah, if you're investing, we'll definitely talk about it's, the legalities involved. It's no worse than the sauna that just is like... Yeah, but you have to... You could choose Hitler, to go... No, like could, Hitler's pot dream. There'll be agreements hey, whoa, and things man, that you have to sign, right. obviously. Kevin, Kevin's Jewish. Oh, my... <laughs> Okay, you guys, now that we've heard all of these pitches... Uh, yes, please. Pitch, please. Uh, we are going to let the judges deliberate for a little while. And just so you know what they're deliberating on, um, we're going to do this show every week. For the first three weeks of the month, there's going to be three contestants on. And they're all competing to come on to the last show of the month. And out of that last show of the month, we'll pick one idea to get a Kickstarter and we'll help you raise money for your idea. Let me get all the contestants over here, please, if you would. I'm going to ask each of you what idea you would invest in or want a Kickstarter started for, whether it's your idea or somebody else's. I'll start with Dom. Sounds like you uh, liked AKMs. You know, I love my idea. I just feel like it's revolutionary, for, especially <laughs> for smart cars in the future. But, you know, we... Is weed. I'm from Colorado, so I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm on board with his idea more than mine, honestly. Ugh. I do. I like yours. It's good when uh, the contestants are not on board for their own ideas anymore. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Alex, what, what do you think after hearing all of these ideas? Well, uh, Dom, that was very noble of you to say that, but I 
honestly think both your ideas are complete dog shit. Uh, <laughs> very noble of you. But first of all, there's two things. Yours was like, just fuck the cops. I don't even, where I don't even know what the product was. No, I love you though. Uh, but in yours, like even in states where weed is legal, nobody, you can't smoke inside. No hotels are going to let you smoke inside. Oh, shit, especially when you're serving food. Oh, sorry, is that your battleship sinking? Right there. Dental hygiene, growing industry in America. That's what I'm I'm saying. Coin 2016. (laughs) Okay, uh, AKM? Uh, You know, I already floss. I'm not missing teeth. (laughs) And then Dom... Honestly, I've never had a bad run-in with the cops, but I think that would be a good precautionary measure. But I think if you just turn your phone on or something like that, you know? But I would say wake and bake, because I would just live there. Honestly, I would just live there. And I, I'm pretty sure we would figure out ways to make it happen. I think the populace would get involved and make a way. If there's a way, there's will, or something like that. Okay, what's going to be really interesting is when we have our legal expert come on for the last show of the month. Whatever idea gets picked. All these sound very expensive to me. So uh, I think the Kickstarter is going to have to raise a lot of money, and we're going to have to go to our legal expert to find out uh, if it's even possible. Right off the bat, this is something we didn't ask, is how much money do you think, like, your Kickstarter... What's the money amount that you would Yeah, set because I think this goes raise? into the decision. Yeah. How much do you think your invention would cost, Dom? Well, for the prototype, considering it's like two camera system where it sees out, you know, there's two cameras on there and there's also a speaker where you can see both. I'm thinking it's going to cost at least 50 to probably about $50,000 for a prototype. Double that. You think 100,000? At least. Ooh. I, okay. But you're also listening to Joe, who's not a fucking entrepreneur. I, I, I'm still going to go with a comedian. If he thinks 100. None of you are. None of you are. I know, which is the greatest. We ask you, hey, how much does it cost? We don't fucking know. Right. And I, I think $50,000, but if the idea really took off, we're coming up with smart cars. And if that really took off, they're going to put that in smart cars. It's going to automatically be a big option business. when you buy your car. So, big business. Okay, Alex, how much do you think your weird retainer that flosses your teeth would cost? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for the negative connotation. Really appreciate that. <laughs> Very negative of you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, listen, I'm no econ major, but I think mine would probably be the cheapest by far. Because with, with, with Dom's, we're talking a lot of technology and innovation. We're talking, for, you, for Aaron, we're talking building permits, air, property, Construction, zoning codes, you got the legislation. Mine, we're talking plastic and fucking dental floss. We're talking maybe six cents. That's what, maybe, a, maybe like six cents is what I'm thinking. So. That's my take. You, you're my pick. You're fully funded. It's all No, good. he's talking about cents. a dentist specially fitting it to your mouth. And I do actually, I do, I do actually like your idea because I don't like flossing my teeth either. So I, I do like it. I'm on board for it. But go ahead. You, you're adjusting your idea that the dentist doesn't now have to fit it. To your to your mouth. Oh yeah, I was sitting over there and I was thinking a little bit. And uh, have you ever used an abacus? Anybody grew up Chinese? Uh, an abacus? <laughs> an abacus? An abacus? An abacus? I don't know. Ar- an- abacus. Well, listen. Have you ever used that closing brand from you, like you, what you do? Listen, you Anybody slide the beads. The beads are tight for. They're, they're tight fit, and you have 16 strands as long, and you adjust them to your teeth, so they're tight. And then you like you you twist them up and screw them on, and so it's easy. It's simple. It's slide, 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 adjustment. Okay, AKM, how much do you think that your uh, Kickstarter would need to raise to get your idea going? Uh, I mean, it just comes down to the investors. I think we could get into an affiliate program with the uh, dispensaries in the area and maybe have a dispensary at the Wake and Bake uh, to help supply with, you know, the weed. And then in terms of building codes and, you know, size of the rooms, edibles, yeah. You know, I mean, the thing with the rooms, too, is it could be four rooms because it's a bed and breakfast or it could be 100. It just depends on the backing that's involved. Kickstart could easily just start at 20000 and then raise $2 million, You know what I mean? So... I think that's something that would, people would get behind. I don't think the finances would be an issue. I don't understand the logic of what you just said, but I'm totally into it. That sounds uh, great. That sounds and, great. Just, and just so everybody knows, um, all we're responsible for is getting you a Kickstarter started. We are not <laughs> finding you investors, and we're not doing any of that stuff, so you're on your own for that. Okay, I think the judges have a decision. Yeah, we deliberated, and although we liked everybody's idea, uh, especially the addition to the 
floss idea <laughs> makes floss. sense that it would take a long time to line up and floss is cheap and you could just do it with your fingers. So floss is cheap, we, motherfucker. <laughs> we didn't, so we didn't go that way. We went with uh, the wake and bake. But thank you guys all. I don't know what else. It's, a, it's an honor. <laughs> yes, AKM, how are you feeling right now? I feel great, and I think that uh, Joe's going to be one of my first investors, hopefully, and we can really build something great. Mike Moses already left, but I'm, I'm just so happy to be here. <laughs> Again, Joe is not going to invest in your idea. <laughs> We're going to make you a Kickstarter. And now you're one step closer to maybe getting a Kickstarter. We're going to have you back at our show at the end of the month. Next week, we'll have three new contestants for the judges uh, to judge their ideas, and we'll see what happens then. Thanks, you guys, for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Welcome to Pitch, Please. I'm a man. <laughs> this has been another great presentation of the Four Eyed Radio Network. You can catch more shows at foureyedradio.com.